go back to the previous section, add column, and now we have the date. And this is beauty. Why? Because I don't need to use any functions like I would do in Excel. I can play with time and create, based on a date column, new columns related to time. So here I have the birth date. So I could say, give me the year and look what is happening. It gives from the birth date that we had here, it generates a new column, which is the year of the birth year. I can go back here, select the birth date, and say, I want, even better, the age. So this dynamically you will see my clock in the laptop and calculate the age of that person, of each person. So if I click age, now it's creating a new column with the age, but the age in days. So now that I have the age in days, I can, you see that a new option is activated in the date and time uh, section here, which says duration. And if I open the duration, I can convert the days, because this is already days, to years or to hours or minutes or seconds. And this will be done because this step is recorded. Wow, look at that. So now, because I'm still in the add column section, I have a new column that was based on that column, but now I have the years. And this is dynamic. Every day that passes, the, and I'm, refer I'm opening the report, the report will calculate the, the dated age of each person. Of course, that is slightly useless to me because there's no way I'm going to create an HR report and slice and uh, slice and dice the, the, the information by individual uh, person's date. But I might want to slice and dice the report based on age groups. So, so now what do we want to do? We want to take the birth date. Remember and keep a note on what I explained earlier about the locale. If for any reason in the future you're working with dates and you have errors and your Power Query cannot detect the dates, then that might be probably because of the, you know, like the locale. So instead of just assigning a date, use a using locale. Now, I will use that because I know that it's a date. How do I know? Because I see the icon here on the top left side. I will use that and I will, as a base, to add a new column. So I go on the menu on the add column and then I go to the date. Look, if I go to the employee ID, the date is deactivated, it's grayed out because the, the, this is a dynamic. It, it can sense that this is not a date, so it doesn't give me an option to do anything with dates. But if I click here, this is activated because it, it detects that this is a date. So in order to play with dates, transform and create new information related to dates, first you have to assign the, the proper data type to a column. Now that I have the date, I can go, let's do the age straight away. And I can click on the add column, don't, don't forget that. I can click age. Actually, let, let me make an error, a deliberate error. So instead of doing that in the add menu, I will do that in the transform because the same exact option exists in the transform. So I select the birth date, I go to the date and I click age. And look what happens. It's transforming the same column, the, this column that I had pre-selected, the date, to a birth date and gives me the date, the age of this person, of each person in days, in number of days. But I lost the birth date. The new step is recorded here in the applied steps, calculated age, but now I don't have the birth date. So if for any reason I, would, I wanted to have the birth date, now I lost it. Now, the beauty with Power Query is that the, at each step, it remembers how the data looked like. So if I go to the previous step here, I, I can see how the, date, the data was before I applied the step. So in here I have it. But if I don't do any changes, what will actually load to my Excel, what will feed my report, will be what I see in the last step. So if I'm not certain that I want to like disappear, make that uh, column disappear, I will delete the step and I will go instead to the add column. So the add column and the transform are almost the same, almost the same. What is the difference that the transformations you do on the transform, they are applied on the column or columns that you actually select, while in the add column, you are creating new columns. And the new columns you are created, they go at the end of the table. Let's get rid of that column, we don't need it. Let's start with that. So let's select and remove that column, the last one. So I selected the last column, and I, I just press delete on my keyboard, or you can right click and select remove. So now I, I, I don't have that last column, I don't need it. Now let's go back, go to the add column, select the birth date, 
and then say view. Uh, sorry, not view, add column, date, and then select age. And if you see in the pop-up here, it says it's creating a new column that contains the duration between the current log at time and the values in the selected column. So age and boom, I have a new column at the end of the table that gives me the age of each person in number of days. So everyone now it's at that step where you have the age, new column, which is age. And now we need to convert that to years. So how do we do that? Okay, so the problem here it is that still this is not really helping. So we want to convert that to days. How we do that? Now, I don't need to create a new column because I, I, you only create new columns if you want to use the new and the previous one. So this is useless for us. So instead of now staying on the add column menu, we're going on the transform. And we say transform, and then we select the column, age column, and then we go duration. And we say transform this to total years. So duration, total years. And now I have the actual age. And you can go and be more specific age and put in parentheses, double click, to rename it in years. Okay. And of course, we can also um, round the number and say, right click, transform, round, and we can round to two decimal places. Again, one more time, right click, transform, round, round, two decimal places. The beauty, if you're still not convinced that this is a very powerful tool, it is that what I do here, it's recorded. All the steps are kept in the memory. So if you load new employee data, you don't need to do the steps again. They will be done automatically with the new updated employee data. So now we have the employees year, age, uh, based on the current day. So if I open that in one year, uh, the first person will be 43.14. The other one will be 54, et cetera, et cetera. So this is dynamic. It's not like a static calculation that uh, it becomes obsolete after a certain period. So Claudette makes a very good question in the chat. She says that she got a question if she should add this new step. So why this happened? The reason that this happened, if I go and, and, and do transformations, a new step is added. But if I, if I by accident, I'm in a, in a previous step, so I, I'm anywhere else, but not at the end, the last step, if I go and I do some transformation, so let's go here, and I do, let's say here, I want to rename that and put a space, monthly rate. Um, so this is a monthly gross salary. You see, that's what Claudette got in her screen. So if you try to do a transformation, but the active step, it's not the last step. It's, it is like, it's trying to prevent you from making a mistake because that new step will be maybe messing up with the order of tasks in your data uh, transformations. So it says, are you sure you want to insert a new step? So if you, if you insert a new step, the, the following steps will, will have a problem because remember, the tool is so powerful. It keeps the, the, the status of the data and the actual data in every step. So at every step, you can click on the, on, on the applied steps and see how the data looks like. But if you go in, in the intermediate step and you, add, you squeeze in an extra step, maybe, maybe yes or maybe not. It depends on what kind of transformation you're doing. Maybe you, you ruin the order of you know, transformation. So you have to be careful when you do that because maybe your, your whole query thing will break. So, okay, look what she says now. She's good, okay? She says, I switch it around. So you can, of course, do that as well. So you can take a step and drag and drop it and reposition it. As long as that step will not interfere with the order of things in your transformation, you can do that as well. So I can move that and make it the last step. <laughs> wow. But look, in this last step, it says, I cannot find what? That column. So that column here was eight. I renamed it and then I did the rounding. What did I round? Look at the formula. I rounded the column which say it's called eight parentheses years with two decimal points. So if I take that and I move it to the end, don't ask me why, just to you know, show you that the order matters. It says I cannot find that. 
because this thing that you're trying to round does not exist. So you're trying to round something which in the previous step, it's called age. And you're trying to round age parentheses years. So by, by changing the order, you, you might break the, the whole thing. So you have to be careful what you're changing. And, and even more important, and I repeat that uh, one more time today, if you delete a step, you cannot undo. There's no undo function for the steps. No, very good. So there is an undo for some things, but not for the steps. So don't delete a step unless you're very certain what, that you can reproduce it or you can fix it again from scratch. So undo control Z, it's not here for Power Query. I don't know why, but Microsoft, maybe, maybe they do it in the future versions. Very good. Okay, again, not really useful. Eh? It's good, it's dynamic, but it's not useful. What would be useful for reporting? If I could take my 300 employees at the Port Authority and group them by age group. So now another great functionality of Power Query. I can go to this menu up here and say where it says add column. Okay, add column. And then I can click the, this option that says column from examples. So let's click column from examples. And I will name that new column that opens here, aids groups, okay? And now it's a little bit of uh, AI on, 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 uh, on your laptop. So I look at the first person, or let's go and see. This first person is 42. So I will give a pattern to Power Query and Power Query will try to identify and expand that pattern for the entire data set. So I will write 40 till 50. And look what it does. It, it's smart enough to understand that I want to do the same for all the other rows in the table and that this relates to the age in, uh, years thing. And it's grouping each staff member to the proper group. It's impressive. You don't need to write any formula. It uses the example you gave, and it, it can actually do that. 